Hello, my name is Dr. Darnita L. Payton, and my purpose is to educate, encourage, and enlighten. Thank you so much for taking the time to stop by my channel today. I am so grateful that you are here. Before you leave, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification. Do me one favor, tell at least five people you know about my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. So today, we are going to talk about five habits of an organized kitchen. Yes, the kitchen the hub of the home where everyone seems to gather when we can gather, where meals are made and memories are made. And it just seems to be the heart of the house. And it's one of my favorite rooms in the house. Now, the title says five habits of an organized kitchen, but just so there's no doubt, I could have easily called it five habits of an organized and clean kitchen, but I didn't think that I would have to say that a kitchen should be clean, but I'll say it. A kitchen should be clean. Okay. <laughs> if you haven't seen my video about 25 random things about me, you will know, uh, if you've seen that, that I hate dirt. And if you haven't seen it, I'll leave it so that you can go see it. There is something about a clean kitchen other than being, you know, sanitary and healthy that is just so, mm, you know, there's not even a word for it. So today we're going to talk about five habits of an organized kitchen. So let me ask you this question. If I was to challenge you to go into your kitchen right now and find five items, either in the dark or with a blindfold, would you be able to find a plate, a bowl, a mug, a spoon, and maybe your can opener? Do you think you could find those things in the dark or with a blindfold? All right, I challenge you to do that. <laughs> but be careful. Don't want you to trip over anything and hurt yourself. Let me know if that was something uh, that you could do in your kitchen. If not, keep watching. <laughs> Inventory. Take stock. Uh -huh. Get it? Stock in your kitchen. Stock. You may find that in your cupboard, in your pantry. Okay. Take inventory, take stock of what it is that you already have. What I find is people really don't know what's in their kitchen. And they especially don't know what's in their kitchen and what they use that's in their kitchen. So there may be things way back in that um, cupboard or in that pantry that expired back in 1965 and you still have it, or you have gadgets that you no longer use or never use, or things that are broken, or things just that are outdated or you, you just don't use anymore. They no longer serve a purpose. And anytime I'm talking about organization or uh, having an organized life, think of prime real estate. Only the things that uh, give you the most bang for your buck, if you would, the things you're going to use the most, or the things that uh, really make your life easier are things that really need to remain in your home. So inventory what you already have. Get rid of that thing from 1965. Nobody will judge you, I promise you. <laughs> but inventory what you have. Um, even make a list of what you have. And if you need to replace something, then you would know uh, what to get when the next time that you were shopping. Or you could try and just you know, use what you already have. Do I really have to explain this one? Really? It's me. Okay, I'll explain it anyway. You knew it wouldn't be a list of organized kitchens if I didn't have purging on the list. Think of your kitchen as prime real estate. You want to make sure that the things that are in there are things that you use and things that serve a purpose. Now, I know some people like to hold on to some things because they're sentimental or I've had them for a long time or I paid money for them. Well, newsflash, just because you paid money for them doesn't mean that they're going to improve your life um, and that they're not taking up space because you're not using them. So go through after you've done inventory, throw away those things from 1965 or 1995 or whenever it is that you put them in your kitchen and let them go. Reclaim that space. And what I want you to do after you reclaim that space is to live with that space for a minute. A lot of people are in a rush to fill up spaces once they've purged. Don't do it. 
let it sit, let it marinate. Get it? That's my second one. Marinate <laughs> because it's your kitchen. Let it marinate for a while. The hey, I have all of this space. And see how it feels not to fill your space up right away. All right? I know, mind blowing, because there are some soakers out there and they're going to say, but Dr. Payton, it takes at least uh, three days for my dishes to soak or that. Unknown substance, that science project, that words can't describe it, to get that off of my dishes. No, it doesn't. An hour, maybe. But anything longer than, you know, a couple of hours, what were you cooking? <laughs> you probably just need to throw that away because it's probably lost. So do your dishes. It makes your kitchen look organized. It makes it look clean. And you can function because you can actually use your sink. In addition to doing your dishes, here's a bonus, put them away. Now, if you are that person who uses a dishwasher, God bless you. I've never used one. That's in my video and 25 more random things about me. Uh, so I have to clean my dishes on a regular basis because, A, I don't like dirty dishes in the sink. It, it really bothers me. Anybody else out there with me that dirty dishes bother you as well? <laughs> Let me know down in the comments if you're bothered by the dirty dishes. So my soakers out there, two hours maybe. After that, just throw it away. It's gone. It, it, it can't be saved. <laughs> if you burned it that badly, say bye-bye. <laughs> Let it go. See number two. Keep your counters clear. That's prime real estate. We've talked about it. Clear counter, horizontal space. Because what I found, and tell me if this is true for you, that most people have the most difficulty with horizontal space, with keeping counters and desktops and things like that clear because it becomes the landing ground for everything. You throw your mail there. You throw your keys there. By the way, don't do that. They're so covered with germs. You don't want to put that in your kitchen where you're going to eat. No. Take that somewhere else. Do that somewhere else. Keep your counters clear. Keep them clutter-free. Keep only the things that you use on a regular basis if you have to keep anything on your counter. That, again, is prime real estate. So go through, see what you have, see what you can put away in your cabinets or in longer-term storage. And again, keep just the things, maybe a couple of decor items if you want to make it all pretty. Um, but the goal is to keep those horizontal spaces as clear as possible. Clear out the clutter. Enjoy that prime real estate. Just look at those nice, beautiful granite or uh, quartz counters that you paid extra for in your new house and you can't even see them. So keep your counters clear. I promise you, you will see a difference. Not buying gadgets. Okay, I could stop right there. But again, I won't. Don't buy gadgets that A, only serve one purpose. Or two, you are never going to use. You bought it because it was pretty, it was shiny, or it was on sale. Or you thought you absolutely had to have that egg roll, egg roller. <laughs> or the combination salad spinner radio. Or that one cup uh, coffee tea dispenser and you drink neither. So resist the urge to buy those gadgets that, again, A, basically serve to separate you from your money and you really aren't going to use, and they're taking up space on those beautiful, now clear counters. So resist the urge to buy those one hit wonder gadgets uh, that you could probably find something else in your kitchen that you already have to use. And as you're doing your inventory, it will be interesting to know how many gadgets do you have that you've absolutely only ever used once or have never used at all? I would love to know that down in the comments. So thank you so much. I hope that these five habits of an organized kitchen were helpful and beneficial. Remember to do inventory. See what you already have, what you don't use, and what you can discard. Number two, purge. 
Let it go. It's okay. You'll be okay, I promise you. Pat yourself on the back because you've done such a great job. Then number three, always do the dishes. Keep that sink clear and shiny and spiffy looking. Put those dishes away and it will make your kitchen look that more, that much more organized. And number four is keep counters clear. Imagine that your counters are that prime real estate and you want to only keep things there that you're going to use on a daily basis. And then number five is to don't buy gadgets that you will never use. I know it looks pretty in the store and it was a two for one sale, but if you don't really need it, don't buy it. Leave it there. I promise you, you won't miss it. Thank you for taking the time to stop by today. If no one has told you today how awesome you are, you are absolutely, positively awesome. Take care. God bless. Bye.